For about 170 bucks, you can pick up a Nokia Lumia 530, their new ultra budget Windows phone. We're going to take a first look and show you what it's all about. Hey everybody, Daniel Rubino here on Windows Phone Central and we're taking a first look here at the Nokia Lumia 530, the new ultra budget Windows phone that features a dual SIM and it goes for about $170, although you can sometimes find it even cheaper than that. Now this phone is starting to go worldwide, but T-Mobile United States is supposed to get it as well, probably in the next few weeks. And that's supposed to come in white, which would be interesting. As you can see, this version is continuing the trend of orange and green, which is Nokia's new favorite colors, apparently. And the 530 is the true successor to the 520, one of the most popular Windows phones to date. Um, in fact, it supposedly makes up around 40% of the Windows phone market. Anyway, what we're looking at here is a really interesting device as it has a few new aspects to it. Uh, for one, you, you get that five megapixel camera on the back. That's nothing new really as the 520 and even the 635, which you can actually see back here, uh, comes with a five megapixel shooter. Uh, whether or not they're exactly the same, who knows, they, they probably are, but uh, you know how Nokia does things. This five megapixel is gonna be better than last year's five megapixel. So uh, don't let that you know dissuade you from uh, this device. The green is definitely uh, really good. Um, it's kind of hard to see in video. It looks a little washed out here, but it's definitely like a, the fluorescent greens. Um, so make sure you know what you're getting when you get this phone. Um, for hardware, some interesting aspects here. It's a 1.2 gigahertz quad core. Now that's not too unusual, but this is running a Snapdragon 200 chipset. And that's sort of a first year for Nokia. The 635 runs Snapdragon 400. And so there are some subtle differences there with the processor. Uh, you also get a four inch display, which I can turn on here now. And you can see it right there. And you get those on-screen capacitive keys, which are actually kind of tiny. They're, uh, it's a little bit small. It's a four inch display. And you're looking at a uh, 854 by 480 display resolution, which is sort of awkward. That's awkward because those 54 pixels are required there for those keys. Uh, what that also means though, is this is actually a true 800 by 400 display, just like the previous version. And they basically made the display slightly longer to accommodate those keys. So unlike say the HTC One, you're not actually losing any screen real estate by having those keys. So that's kind of cool. Uh, other than that though, display is you know pretty much the same as the 520s. There's no clear black. So you the colors look okay on here, but they're not nearly as good as say the 635 which does have a clear black display and maybe it's a little unfair here to be comparing those two different colors so i'll bring up orange and show you what it's like uh and you get that extra green color there which is kind of nice too so you can kind of see the differences there even the hue is a little bit different but the clear black uh looks much better and you can really see the difference when the display is off uh, you notice how this looks like a solid black slab where you can clearly see where the display is on here versus the bezel. And that's the effect of the clear black. So that's one of the differences you get with the 630 series versus the 530. Uh, other than that, no front facing camera. Going around here, you have your volume control, your power button. No camera button, so that is gone once again. You get your headphone jack, like we said, the five megapixel camera there. There's your speaker and a micro USB charger. Now, overall, it's a pretty similar device to the 520 series. Uh, this is actually a 525, which is really no different except it has a little bit more RAM in it, but just to be technical. Uh, let's look at the sizes here. Um, you know, it's actually a hair smaller than the 520, and part of that is due to the more rounded back on this. So you can see this one has like a little bit more corners on it, where this one they rounded it off. And so it feels a little bit different. The cameras are also a little bit different as far as sizes, but obviously they're gonna perform the same. And in terms of thickness, uh, let's see, they're, well, they're very, very close. Actually, you could almost say that the 525 is a hair thinner. Having said that though, I think the feel of this is much better. Um, I don't really like the sharp corners on phones and I like roundedness very much. Uh, for comparison, I would say this feels very much ironically, like a Lumia 620, which is kind of funny because it's almost like they're switching places. 620 was one of my favorite phones, 
but the 635 I would say is actually doesn't really feel like a true successor to the 620. Um, it is in terms of spec, but in terms of design, not so much. This actually feels exactly like the 620 design, which I'm actually a pretty big fan of. But there you go. Now, um, I should also point out, you can pop this cover off and you have the battery back here, which is of course replaceable. You can see I got a T-Mobile SIM in there. This is a dual SIM variant, so it takes two of those and this runs Windows Phone 8.1. This also does take a micro SD card, so you can go up to 128 gigs, which is good because it only has four gigs of internal. So you'll definitely want to pick up uh, some extra memory there. The dual SIM should be really good for emerging markets. Uh, let's go into settings here. You can see, even though this is running a Snapdragon 200, it is running Windows uh, 8.1, and actually I'm not even sure if it's 8.1 update one. We'll see. It is running, uh, oh, 12400, so that's uh, not the 8.1 update. In fact, you can probably see if I try to create folders. They won't happen. So this is running that, but it does have, of course, Lumia Cyan on board. But even with a 1.2 gigahertz quad core, this is actually pretty zippy. I have to admit, uh, it actually feels really nice. You can make a good argument that uh, 8.1 started off a little rough on these 512 megabyte devices, but with the recent updates they've been getting, it's actually in along with the Lumia Cyan firmware, it actually handles very, very well. I'm actually pretty impressed with how quick some of this. Uh, feels while scrolling around, which is sort of better than the previous devices. Uh, overall though, a really good phone. The one limitation of course is you're going to have that 512 megs of RAM, which for some people is a deal breaker. That means you can't run some high-end games, and that's really about it to be honest. But, you know, lately we've been seeing a lot of games being getting that 512 uh, megabyte support, so it's becoming less and less of an issue. And I don't think you're really buying a four inch displayed phone for you know, what is considerably pretty cheap to do high end gaming. But it's really not a concern in my opinion, but it's just something you should be aware of. Overall though, great phone. We're going to do a full review of this in a few days and we'll tell you what we think of it. But uh, so far I'm pretty impressed, especially considering the price point. I think it's a great follow up to the 520 and you guys should definitely check it out. Also, I want to point out, this is kind of neat. They have the Nokia, label here is the first time I've seen this where it's actually um, uh, physically in the, the back plate there as opposed to uh, a paint job. So a slight change there for Nokia. And you, of course you can buy replacement plates for this and change the color. So feel free to do that. Head to Windows Phone Central for more information. Check out our forums and let us know what you think. Take care everybody.